Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanaliza Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we're going to do some more exhibition matches. Because it's the shortest day of the year, and I figure I should spend those few precious hours of daylight inside casting some Zero K. So, we're going to start out with a match between Manu 12 and Dying Throwing, a request from a couple weeks ago, which I'm now finally getting to because the tournament's over. Manu 12 going for Spider Factory. Dying Throwing, on the other hand, going for the Amphbot Factory. On Onyx Cauldron, a map which, if I were. No, map which is still in the map making pool, or matchmaking pool. There has been a change to the matchmaking pool quite recently, and Onyx Cauldron made the cut. Obsidian, on the other hand, did not. So, if you liked Obsidian, I. I'm sorry. I don't understand why, but you, it's, you got private matches, so you can still play those. So, yeah. But Honest Culture remains in the pool. Anyway, at this point, both players going for a reasonably similar setup. Mounted 12 going a little bit more in their main base, however, which is not a great idea to me. I mean, they do have the fleas. They know that they can just go out basically wherever. I mean, the thing is that Dying Friends one is going to need to be a little more cautious, considering that, well, fleas can kind of go anywhere and are very difficult to deal with. But Dying Friends already prepared for that. At least in the main base, but of course, the problem with fleas is how do you deal with them when you aren't in an area yet? And there's a bunch of them. Like, two or three dozen, which we'll likely see at the end-ish of the game, because that's how spider games go these days. Fleas all day. Every day. Because, I mean, you can't really deal with them with amp bots. At least not with ducks. With archers you should be able to, which I'm guessing we'll be seeing fairly shortly. And indeed we are seeing a few archers because you kinda have to. But at the same time, I don't what if they've got provision? Not as much as I would have expected, actually. I would have expected a lot more considering they are playing with fleas. They're playing spider bots. Spider bots can see everything. Spider bots see all. Or at least they just have fleas everywhere, which means they don't need to see anything. They just go there and kill it, unless it's a lotus. In which case, they can't go there and kill it because it's a Lotus, and then just, it retargets too quickly. Still, though, Manu 12, setting up, I'd say, a fair bit faster than Dying Freund. Mostly because this, wait, really? Mostly because of Overdrive, from the looks of it, that is pretty much the only difference between the two players right now. But again, Manu 12 being surprisingly cautious, considering that they do have fleas, can just go around any, basically anywhere, they know exactly where Dying Freund is. Daimfreund is being cautious, which is what I would expect, using their commander primarily to get to the island, which not too different from Mana 12. It's just that, again, Mana 12 doesn't really have to do this. They might be concerned about a bunch of ducks coming out of the water. I mean, they do have the one. That will be a small problem. But, I mean, their commander, Beam Laser Commander, just gets rid of the duck. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. This is an early version. Wow, my bad. What version of the game is played on? I mean, this was a request from a little while ago, sure, but I thought this was 1620. No, 16113. Okay, this is way older than I thought. My bad. Sorry, guys. This is actually the previous version of the game. Again, because I kept getting requests, and I don't like to say no to requests. Even though I feel like... Okay, at this point, do not request anything from 16113. I will not cast any games from 16113 anymore. 1612 or nothing. Although, that being said, quite a lot of harassment going on on the north side of the map, as Dynafrind is... Which unfortunately I missed while trying to figure out which I realized I could have just checked in-game what the version number is, but yeah, that Anyway, so Dime Frying taking a bit of damage over in the north base, just to just one metal extractor, not a huge amount of damage. But still, Mana 12 has full vision of that. While at the same time, Dime Frying desperately trying to get some harassment in, but not gonna happen. Mana 12 may not have a beam laser on their commander, but they do have the lotus near enough by that it might as well be. Of course, this is keeping Mana 12 somewhat stuck. I mean, they're basically on this island. They haven't expanded over to the northeast at all, and Dimefriend, on the other hand, is gradually pulling themselves over there. So, at this point, Dimefriend is definitely winning the economy game, as Mana 12 essentially is just leaving themselves trapped in their own base, not allowing themselves to move forward. Primarily because, of course, they have to deal with the archers, but at the same time, this is one of those situations where I almost feel like, just build urchins. Like, don't even bother, just build urchins. Build two or three urchins, let them get rid of the stuff in the water, Anything tries to retreat into the water, it dies to the urchins. Anything tries to attack on land, it dies to the lotus. There you go. I don't expect to see that, but if we did, that'd be pretty cool. But I can't expect to see that, because of course, why would you use an urchin in most situations to deal with stuff in a tiny little river? In a large lake, maybe. In a sea map, sure. In a tiny river, no. No, you wouldn't. And... 
yeah, that's sort of the problem. Duck coming in here, unable to really do much, and the archer. I mean, the archer might have some chance of doing some stuff above land, but it may not matter. Back into the top side of the base, dime throwing is having to deal with. Well, some fleas, but again, they got archers. They're good. Main problem, of course, being the recluses, but the recluses are having a bit of a hard time actually hitting the archers. One of the archers already getting into the lake, so not really a huge amount of concern for Manu 12. Sorry, for Dying Friend. Also, bearing in mind, this is an older version of the game, so archers... Archers are continuous, per are continuous fire. They are not burst fire yet. Again, another reason why I'm like, don't give me replays this old again. I mean, like I said, this is an older request, so fine, but yeah, one six eleven three is over now. Still though, Manitov holding on reasonably well to the center. It's just, it feels like mostly it's just they got vision everywhere. They don't really have much else. They do have a grizzly, and they have boatloads of fleas to help deal with the grizzly because of course Manitov is just going mass flea because that's kind of what you do. And getting a couple widows to help out as well, because of course, heavy unit, get the anti heavy sniper. But I do expect to see the fleas coming in here because Grizzly has very, very low fire rate, and if the fleas are spread out well enough, the Grizzly really can't deal with them. I mean, the support archer will help, but it's a question of whether or not it'll survive long enough. Because the DPS, the Grizzly, is going to be enough that it's not likely to actually serve. Or sorry, the, not DPS, the DPS of the fleas. That's enough that it should be able to actually get rid of the Grizzly reasonably quickly. I mean, that's going to be about 900 damage a second. So 10 seconds, the Grizzly dies. The only problem, of course, being the Archer, which will get rid of all of the Fleas, no problem. But it looks like there's not even... That's not even the concern. The Fleas aren't even trying to go for the Grizzly. Okay, I don't really agree with attacking the Lotus like this, but sure, give it a shot, I guess. You're going to lose a lot of Fleas to Death Explosions. A lot of Fleas to Death Explosions. But hey, you managed to find this magic number of Fleas that breaks through Lotus. Way too freaking many. Actually, to be fair, the, the fleas probably could have survived if they had been far enough away from the Lotus to not get killed by the Death Explosion, but that's the problem with fleas. You have to be super careful to make sure that the Death Explosion doesn't kill them. At any rate, past two coming in here. There are the Widows, there's the stun on the Grizzly, and there are the fleas to try to help get rid of it while the archers come in to help support. The fleas will not be able to kill this in time before the archers get in there, but they will be able to deal quite a bit of damage in the meantime. I mean, 20 seconds left of basically nothing happening. The fleas... Get it down to half HP, so it's not bad. But yeah, of course, the problem being, what are you going to do with that afterwards? On the other hand, Manu 12 fighting his Dying Friend, the commander battle over the north side of the map, which looks like it is definitely going in Dying Friend's favor. Manu 12, I don't really know what the point of that Lotus is, because Dying Friend with the Machine Gun Commander should be able to take care of it before it's even built. At the same time, over the south side of the map, Grizzly, half health, but not really all that threatened. On the other hand, Dying Friend's commander coming in here, and... Oh! Never mind, is stunned out, does not manage to get through the Lotus, and does get killed. Ah, never mind, not quite. Okay, Dying Friend, able to run away, almost gets killed. One more lightning gun shot would have done it, but Mana 12 at least is able to hold on to the northeast side of the map. That's the more important thing there. Definitely a fair bit more damaged. Oh, apparently Dying Friend has streamed this. Okay, well, that does not surprise me. I've been kind of trying to avoid Dying Friend games recently because Dying Friend streams regularly, so. Most people who have seen these games probably have. I, Probably you've seen it already in Dying Friend's Dream. So yeah, that's the thing to bear in mind. At any rate, Dying Friend losing the Grizzly does have quite a bit of metal. Is e stalling like mad though? I do not understand why they don't have more energy. They took a bit of damage earlier on thanks to the fleas, but not that much damage. Certainly not that consistently. But I guess Dying Friend has always had an issue with that. I mean, most players do. e stalling is something that's very difficult to actually remember to deal with. Because you're so focused on getting territory, you sometimes forget, oh yeah, you also need energy in your base to actually make use of that territory. And sometimes everyone forgets that. And also sometimes you manage to get through your opponent's grizzly with a bunch of widows on top of flea and herbicide support, so there you go. That's a grizzly dead. That's a lot of reclaim over Mana 12, and Mana 12 has the power to actually make use of that reclaim. What reclaim is there anyway? Thousand metal. Good stuff. That should be about, well... About a minute and a half, two minutes of an extra 7.5 metal per second for Manu 12 if they send over a Weaver there. So, get, get that taken care of, and well, after that, it's just a matter of taking care of basically everything else Dying Friend has built up. Dying Friend, accessing as much as they are, they're not really taking advantage of this 
entire economy over to the southwest, so it's not like Manitoulin's going to be damaging them too much. That's the one thing, if you're excessing, it's not good, but it also means that you're not losing as much if you get raided. I don't recommend excessing. It's just worth noting that when you're raiding someone who is excess, if you happen to notice that someone else is excessing and you're raiding them, you're not going to be dealing that much damage at first, because the first few metal extractors, they're already putting to waste anyway. Like, they've essentially raided themselves in advance. A big reason why it's really good to go after things like caretakers first, because if you go for caretakers, if you can go for caretakers, then you nullify the use of the metal extractors before they even come up. Or power plants, same thing, but power plants are usually much tougher than metal extractors. Because, yeah, then it's like you've killed five metal extractors by killing one caretaker for how little they can use them. Oof. And that's why archers got nerfed. <laughs> Stuff like that. Like, pushing ravens aside. Which are thankfully aerodynamic to the point that they don't really care if they're being pushed around at stall angles. They just keep going. Because this game does not simulate flight physics. Probably for the best. Oh. Uh, I mean, it tries, but it does not. At the same time, though, Mano 12 just destroying basically everything inside of Dimefrain's base. So this push here is doing pretty well, but it is a last-ditch attempt. If this Grizzly and Archer combo is not able to get rid of Mano 12's base, which I don't think it will be able to do, that's Mano 12 taking this game. From the looks of it, I mean, at the very least, a lot of damage being dealt right away. These Hermits able to basically get rid of everything. The only problem, of course, being the Grizzly, but with the Archers gone, that Grizzly is basically screwed, and mostly the rest of the base is completely dead. If the Hermits get rid of this Lotus... The fleas can come in here and tear everything apart, but no, Archer comes in here. Finishes off all the fleas. That is going to be it for the assault. Does not manage to get rid of the caretaker. Oh, this this hermit could have done so much more if it had been micromanaged just a little bit to get rid of another caretaker or two. Unfortunately, it looks like Mano 12 was much more focused on trying to get rid of this down here. Actually, what was Mano 12 focused on? Nah, definitely main base. Because that assault, if microed a bit better, could have gotten rid of all the caretakers, nullified basically everything Dimefern had done to expand, and would have bought a lot of time for Manu 12 to get back in the game here. Because they are having a bit of a tough time. They are trying to build up as much as they can, but these caretakers are not really helping out build up. They're using all their energy to just get repairs going. Not a bad thing to do, but it's clear that the Ravens cannot really get in here. The archers are just stopping them. Or they should switch off to go to the high dive, which... Really? They're... Oh yeah, against shields and units. Yep, that, that makes sense. Change that dive state, because it is not helping against archers. Of course, it's one of the things about 0k that's a little bit annoying, is that dive state is... or states in general are such an important thing. Yeah, at this point, with the amount of grizzlies coming in here, dive find, I don't see any major weakness to their plan, unless Mana 12 actually changes up their own strategy to help deal with the grizzlies. Throw in a Thunderbird or two. If you throw that in first, you should be able to take care of everything else. It's just a matter of getting that Thunderbird in there first to actually get rid of the Grizzly, get rid of the Archer. Just stun everything out, because the problem is the Grizzlies come in support of Archers. Ravens can't deal with them. Nothing can really deal with them, because the Archers just get rid of everything. And there's no, there's nothing to stop them. Thunderbird, at least, would be flying high enough. It wouldn't matter. The Archer wouldn't be able to hit it, and to be able to stun everything out. So that'd be the way to go. That'd be the more useful thing to do. Same time, though, Dimefrain just harassing from the north side while the Grizzly is able to lock down the expansion over the North Island. And a second Grizzly coming in, threatening Mana 12's base, and Mana 12 really doesn't have a major counterattack to come in here. They've got a lot of fleas, but unfortunately, fleas do not do well against lotuses, so it's gonna be difficult. They could break maybe one, maybe two of these lotuses. They'll lose a lot of fleas in the process, but handled properly, it should work, but this isn't exactly what I call handled properly. They're clearly going for suicide mission and. Not managing to do much. Getting rid of one metal extractor and that's it. While well, at the same time, Dimefron comes in for the kill. I mean, between the Grizzly and the water, that's doing surprisingly well for being bombed out as much as it is. And the second Grizzly coming in as support, with the Archers coming in as support, stopping all the Ravens from basically doing anything. This game is not going Mana 12's way. And finally, the Ravens do get through, break through the Archers. But at the same time, that's another Grizzly on its way. On top of the Anglers coming in here to try to get rid of the Ravens more properly. I mean, the Archers are doing a fine job pushing them away, but the Anglers are going to actually kill them. Oh, and Dimefriend's command... Dimefriend, I do not recommend having put your commander where you did, but it's dead now. Or at least it would be if it got targeted at the very end. Good for it dropping into the deep water there. Actually, I think Mana 12 might still be able to see that, but no. In fact, trying to escape off the edge of the map. 
A valiant effort. I, I'm curious how it's going to work out, but I seriously doubt it will. Seeing as apparently it's gone above water and... Wait, has it? Ah, there it is. The owl getting over here. That, that's going to be death. The owl can see the commander. That is it. Dimefriend losing their commander. Not a huge blow, though, considering how far Dimefriend is into Manageable's base and how much firepower they have brought to bear. Really, just... Dimefriend just march in here. I mean, a couple grizzlies. Maybe not in the best position. But there's another one coming in. The angler's coming in on top of that. The only problem right now for Dimefriend is that they did lose a fair bit of their economy as they were getting hit, or getting attacked. I mean, Mana 12 has been coming in, taking out some metal extractors, took out the entire north side with their commander alone. So Mana 12 is a little bit ahead economically. Just a matter of how long these Grizzlies can survive. One of them is down, the other one doing okay for now. It's just a matter of whether or not Dimefriend can save it with good anti-air. And that seems unclear right now. I really get the impression that Dime Friend's having a very difficult time actually holding on to this for the simple reason that it's... It's just a couple of Swifts. That's really not enough. Not with Mana 12, with what Mana 12 has. On the other hand, Mana 12 just constantly throwing fleas away, but they are managing to find quite a bit of purchase as they do. They're getting a lot of value. It's just... It only fleas. They're getting value, but at the cost of their own life. Same time, though, Mana 12's commander coming in here, baiting out a Grizzly. Not really the best option, considering that the Grizzly is going to be able to just wipe it out pretty quickly. I mean, the Ravens will be able to come in. Oh, never mind. No, the Ravens have not got it. It'll take two more Ravens to actually get rid of the Grizzly. But, that being said, the Grizzly not able to kill the Commander in time, so Mana 12 like, is just able to rebuild that expansion. Actually, losing that, I think, means Dimefriend will have very little chance of getting back in this game. It looked good. It looked like they had a decent chance, but ultimately, Mana 12 switched over to light vehicles, set up some anti-archer forces with the fencers. That generally bombed out the archers in the first place, so there wasn't really much they could do to prevent the do the death of the grizzlies, thanks to the ravens. And at this point, Mana 12, they've got a massive metal advantage. I mean, dying for trying to set up the counters they can, but they are playing on the back foot. The archer over the north here will be of some use. We'll be able to get rid of two or three of the metal extractors before getting torn apart by the fences. And actually, dying for very focusing into the northeast side of the map. At the same time, they do have the south side somewhat secured, but the fencers coming in here will be able to take out all the lotuses, and there's not really much else defending this. So once the fencers come through here, Dying Friend's economy is going to go down again, even though they are taking care of some of Mana 12's economy and will likely come in with a few workers at some point, maybe? Maybe not? I honestly can't tell. I don't even... Do they have any con... No, they have, they have conscious going there. All right. It's not a complete waste. So they might be able to, but at the same time, the southwest is being torn to pieces by this army of fencers, I, I mean, Mana 12, they're just keeping Dying Front down. That's the important thing. Like, Mana 12 is doing okay. They're holding on reasonably well. They're losing the Northeast, which is a bit of a pain, but their main base is fine. They have a reasonably strong collection of unit types, and they're able to just tear apart everything that's been built up over here. Dying Front coming in with some archers to try to stop this, but the archers... Actually, this many archers, this will be enough. This will be, we'll be able to get through the fencers. Herman's coming in to try to deal with it, but it's a little bit tricky. As is, the fencers are doing an okay job, but once the archers get close, it's too late. As soon as archers get close to any unit, and this, this iteration, this version, which is why they were changed, as soon as they get close to any unit, they do not let that unit fire because of a weird quirk in the spring engine. Units can't fire unless they're firmly rooted to the ground, so archers stop them from being firmly rooted to the ground and thus stop them from firing. So, good save there from Dying Throwing, but even then, Mana 12 still has way too much firepower. They've had a massive economic advantage for the last five minutes. Or not massive, but still 5 metal per second is not nothing. And that economic advantage has come in, on top of the fact that the Grizzlies were destroyed. And while there is a another Grizzly, yet another Grizzly here, getting rid of Manitol's commander. It's... Wait, no. That's an energy violin. My bad. Manitol's commander's doing fine. Good thing I didn't miss that. I was worried. Did I miss another commander death? No! Today I did not. Today I was... I was fine. But the Grizzly coming to the main base could still be a problem. The Anglers are in place to stop this. But at the same time, that means the Fleas can come in and just have a field day. It's not an angler archer mix, I mean, the archers are back there, so yes, the archers could come in and support eventually. Actually, they will come in and support quickly enough. This looks like Mana 12 might still go down. Possibly a base coming in here, but unfortunately, fleas do not last long enough for this to actually matter. Again, fleas do not do well against lotuses. Doing fine thus far, actually, all things considered, but mostly they just haven't been attacked by the lotuses and haven't gotten killed by any death explosions yet. 
But yeah, that, that's what's happening now. And on top of that, the Grizzly over in the base. Mana 12 should be losing their commander very shortly. And with that, they'll probably end up losing the game. Because I don't really... I don't really see any much army left. Taking on the Terra Southwest, which is good. Dying for is very little to rebuild with. But Mana 12, on the other hand, they're also relying pretty heavily on their overdrive. Which, if they lose the wind generators, is done. The Grizzly doesn't have a whole lot really threatening it. And that was a nice shot in the fusion reactor. Getting rid of all the care... Or almost all the caretakers. Getting rid of the... Oh, well, getting rid of quite a bit of... Yeah, caretakers, wind generators. Fair bit of the power that Mana 12 had, which... Even without that, they're still doing fine economically. But Mana 12 doesn't see any way of getting out of the Grizzly, and Diamond takes it. It's a bit of a surprise there at the end, but... Hey, it worked out. Well, anyway, that was match one. That was the last match I will cast on that version of the game. Last 1-6-11-3 match... I do not miss it. Anyway, the next match is going to be FFC and El Torero on Aurelian. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.